Uh, this is Alvaro San Martin, and we are today in the Home Homeschooling Global Summit with, with Francis Pack. Um, and I'm very excited to uh, start talking to her about her incredible adventure uh, in her alternative education journey. Um, welcome, Francis. Hello. It's Francis, and it's really nice to be here. Very excited to talk to you about this. Um, let's give the audience a little bit of background context. Um, Frances has just recently graduated from Minerva University, that is a four-year program uh, accredited in the US where students travel around the world for four years while studying most of her curriculum online, which I would like Frances to talk about uh, later during the interview. Uh, and she has majored in design and societies. Um, so I would love to hear more about it too. Uh, but what also is interesting about Frances' uh, experience is that she spent her teenage years uh, traveling and doing a self-directed global educational experience by herself. Um, and yeah, I'm super curious to know about that. So Francis, please tell us about that journey since you started thinking, okay, I'm gonna do something different with my education. How did that start it? Yeah, I mean, so I was born and raised in the United States and I had been going to public school there from when I was young and it was really fun and I really enjoyed it until I was around 14 years old and that's when um, everything changed and from there I dropped out of school and did all these different things and found myself at a really innovative university and I'm graduated now and I guess the beginning of all of that was when I was 14. My dad who was coincidentally a professor at the University of Michigan where we lived had been doing a and what he was working at. And I think he had a lot of realizations about education um, and thought a lot about what education might look for us, his kids as well. And so he first gave us the proposition, hey, how about we all drop out of school and I'll leave my job at the university and we'll try something, we'll try something out and we'll travel and we'll find some way to create a new system. And at the time I just finished middle school and my brothers had just finished third and fourth grade. And my brothers were very excited about all of this. Like, this is the coolest thing. We won't have to go to school, no homework forever. Um, and for me, it was a big decision because I really liked school and going to school and being with friends and studying in that way. And so I had thought about it for a very long time. Um, I also went to high school for two months on my own while my family traveled so I could kind of see what it's like and see if this was something worth pursuing. And I think it was then that I realized, oh, maybe my dad is right. Maybe there are new things that I can do um, that I could spend my time on outside of sitting in a classroom for eight hours with other peers just studying from books. And so that's when it all started and I was fresh what out did of you middle do then? school. When, um, what, what was like kind of this setup back then? So you, you decide to do this and uh, how were the first couple of years doing it? Yeah, I think we only intended this to be a, like a short, maybe six month thing, but it turned out to be seven, eight years. But in the beginning, <laughs> um, it was very fun. We just tried out a lot of different activities, but after a while, we had to think about, okay, how exactly do we want to set up this education thing? We can do homeschooling. We can send you to a boarding school in some other country if you want. We can go to a school. We based ourselves in Korea at that time, so we could send you to an international school in Korea. But I think after a lot of discussion and thinking, we decided we wanted to pursue um, a new type of education, something that's more just and I guess isn't exclusive to like privileged or wealthy people. And so we decided, okay, we won't do private school. We won't do boarding school. We won't do homeschool. We'll do something else. And my dad told us all that um, you guys can have full responsibility over what you guys do or what you learn or study or don't. And so you can do whatever you want and we won't tell you what to do. 
So if you need help and you want to study, we'll help you get books. If you're not going to study for the rest of your life, okay, find something else to do and we'll support that. And so it was really up to us, which was pretty chaotic in the beginning, because as a 14 year old or for my brothers as like nine year olds, nobody knows what we want to spend every day on or have plans for our future or anything at that time. So the beginning was kind of a lot of trying things out and then a lot of nothing and being bored and in the boredom we kind of figure out okay um, let's think about what we really want to do with our lives or what's important to us right now and let's mm -hmm. find ways to try those out and so um yeah later it became for me i did a lot of traveling to the middle east because that was something i was very interested in and learning arabic and i also tried out all these different hobbies that i wanted to learn like dancing and photography and also went to a lot of meetings with my dad to talk to different business people and learn about the things that they were doing. And so that was my life for probably those four or five years that I was supposed to be in high school. Um, lots of interesting new things and a lot of boredom and nothing and thinking in between, I'd say. And um, I, I could imagine that your dad at that point was sometimes also doubting himself, right? Because I think it's a pretty, pretty difficult decision. Like, um, how have you talked to him about that? About how, how did he decide to do that? Uh, is that something that has come up in your family conversations? Oh yeah, I think there's a lot of uncertainty because that's a big risk to take as a father to yeah. pull your whole family out of everything. Um, and try something out and let your kids pick for themselves what they'll do. And a lot of other parents had also a lot of concerns with that too and would talk to my parents like, oh, I don't know if this is right. You should still send them to school or something. Um, but I think he was pretty confident in the fact that there are a lot of things to learn in the world outside of in the classroom. And he was on our own without the need to um, go to an actual school to do it and so I think he had a lot of faith in us um, but we did discuss throughout the, the period of time that in between there was a little bit of doubt like oh I'm not sure if we're doing the right thing and then we realized no I think this is the right thing um, until even until I just graduated university I think that's when my dad finally was like okay, I think we did the right thing. She graduated university. You can still do that without going to school for this many years. And during that time, what do you remember that were the most challenging and also the most exciting parts of that homeschooling life? Yeah, I think the exciting part was finally being able to try out so many things um, because I had so much time every day I got to um, whatever I wanted to try I could try it out if I wanted to take these kinds of classes I would just take them um, and throughout my journey I met so many different people when I went to the Middle East I would talk to students there um, and hear about their lives and their stories and traveling around with my dad as well I got to meet a lot of very interesting individuals that were doing interesting things in the world and so that was really exciting for me um, being able to experience a wide range of things that I wouldn't have been able to if I was still in um, school and doing the things I was doing before in my small town. Um, and the hardest was probably just the fact that there's so much responsibility on you now as a teenager because my parents weren't going to tell me what to do and I had no school that gave me a schedule for my whole day and where I don't have to think about like, okay, what am I waking up to tomorrow? Um, if I don't decide, then there's nothing. So I need to really think about that a lot, which was very difficult in the beginning. Um, but after a while, I learned like, okay, this is how you manage time and um, you should have a really active attitude to get the things you want done. Um, and there was a lot of trial and error process throughout of trying things and not liking it and trying to figure out ways that are to make these experiences happen in my life that seem very far away. So, yeah, that was probably the most difficult. Can I imagine, did you have doubts in terms of, oh, maybe this is too much, maybe I should just do what everyone else is doing, <laughs> things like that? 
I think I didn't have that many doubts. In the beginning, I think I had a lot of doubts just because school was such an exciting and fun place for me. And so leaving that initially, I was really uncertain whether this would be equally as exciting, whether I would get a lot out of this. And during the periods of time where I didn't have much to do and I was very bored, then I also was sometimes thinking back um, and wondering whether this is the right choice. But I think as time progressed, as more and more time passed, I realized the value of these experiences. And the more I talked with my peers or people my age or friends back at home in school, um, they would tell me that they, even they think that what I'm doing is really valuable and that I'm learning a lot of different things. And so by the time I was at like the university age, I was pretty confident and secure about my experience and was really glad that I took that step. Yeah. Let's, let's move to that part then. Um, when did you actually decide that you wanted to go to university? I think university was not something in my mind for the longest time um, until people, other people started asking me about it. Uh, around 18, yeah, around the age of 18, that's when I guess people my age typically go to university in traditional school. And I had no thoughts on it, but my friend's parents, my parents' friends would ask me like, oh, so where are you going to college next year? Are you applying to places? Where have you applied? And it had not been on my mind at all. So I wondered, oh, is this something that I'm supposed to be thinking about now? And I talked to my parents a lot about this and they were also thinking like, oh, is this something that we really need her to pursue or that would be really good for her? And I think my dad also suggested at that time, having been in that college life and been teaching in that area, that if I go to college, that I should go with certainty and that I should have 10 good reasons to go to college. And so just to encourage me not to go to university, just that's what people say is the right thing to do. And so around 18, I started thinking about whether college was right for me and looking at the different colleges in the US and they all looked okay, but I think I couldn't find that many reasons that I needed to go or that I would have wanted to go. Um, and I would look at the admissions processes and what they are looking for in students. And I realized that none of the experiences and the values that I thought were really important for a student to have didn't seem to be so important to universities in the processes of how they assess you and look at you. And so I think at that time, I kind of decided, okay, then instead of university, if none of these are appealing to me right now, then I'll do something else and I'll pursue a different path, just like I was doing with high school. And then that's when I found Minerva, I guess, very randomly. Um, okay. How did that happen? So it was after I decided for myself and I told my parents verbally that I will stop pursuing college because I can't find one that I like and I can't find reasons to go. And I think a week after I told them that I found an ad for Minerva on Facebook, which is probably the weirdest way to find out about a university. But <laughs> it was an ad that showed that talked about this really new university that's really innovative, where you travel all around the world with all of these diverse students. And it caught my eye, so I looked into it more. And the more I looked into it, the more interested I was. And it seemed like the institution version of what I had been trying to make for myself as a teenager. And so I told my parents that I was applying to this university. Um, and they had never heard of it either. And they didn't think I would get in, I guess, since the admissions uh, rate is so low. So they're like, OK, whatever. And once I told them I got in, that's when we all started researching the university. My parents were like, okay, what is this school? Um, but I think we all concluded at the end that this was really something that fit what I had wanted and what I need in my life. And there were plenty of reasons for me to go, yeah. And in terms of the admissions process, did you feel at any disadvantage because of your alternative education schooling? For this case, not really, because I think Minerva did admissions really interestingly, which is something that also caught my eye, because it seemed like they really wanted to assess students based on their 
um, on their skill and their knowledge and their passions. And so they didn't accept standardized testing like SAT or SA ACT because they mm -hmm. thought it was just a, it just showed you how wealthy you are because people that can afford test prep can do better. So instead they have their own assessments that are kind of like puzzles, I guess, like IQ tests and they have essays and they have interview questions that are not like traditional questions, but more questions that probe the way you think and your opinions on things. I remember one of them being something like, oh, if you were in a foreign country and you didn't speak the language and you had no money, what would you do to get around? And so they're very interesting questions that make you think. And the application process itself was pretty enjoyable. And I didn't feel like there was any disadvantage from my background because they're really trying to assess who you are and what you feel and what you do now instead of what have you prepared for and can you study harder for tests or not? And so they really look at students just as they are. Mm. Very good. So tell us a little bit then about your experience at the university now that you have actually a, a class or a cohort of people. Um, how did you feel about that and how has been that experience for you? Yeah, I think going into it, I had no idea what to expect just because it's so new. Um, it's by the time I got there, there was only one upper class in front of me. So I would have been the second graduating class, but I went in and it was extremely exciting and I learned so much. Um, the way it works basically though is for people who don't know is that you have a cohort of students, which are maybe 70 to 80 percent from outside of the US. And so they're mostly internationals from all over the world. And you with these maybe 100, 150 to 200 students travel around the world to seven different countries over the course of four years. And you take class. The, the school has made themselves. Sorry, sorry Francis. Um, sorry and then you do projects you. in the different cities. Um, it got cut off a little bit. So the classes oh, no. are, um, you were you were cut off when you were explaining how the classes work. Okay. So the classes are all run online on Minerva's own online platform. And this allows us to take classes anywhere in the world, wherever we go as we travel. And when we're in these different cities, we also do projects and work with companies or governments or different organizations in the city to kind of apply what we learn in real life. And so I think it was really cool experience and something I personally really um, appreciated in the way they did things, particularly, I guess three things really stood out to me in this Minerva experience. And the biggest one is probably the students because without the students and living with the students for four years, it's kind of like an online university. And so traveling with this group of students that you're with for four years really made a huge difference. And because of the way Minerva does admissions, it was, you were surrounded by a lot of passionate, really accomplished, very interesting individuals from all over the world. And that itself was um, a really unique opportunity, I think. And the other thing that I thought was very, very cool about how Minerva worked was their curriculum because their curriculum was focused on the four C's, which is like creative thinking, um, critical thinking, communication, and there's also like interacting with other people. And people talk about this a lot, but people don't really know exactly what it means in real life or how you actually learn these skills. But I think Minerva kind of put these skills into words and taught them to us in um, more specific ways. So then you kind of understand what it means to think critically or what it means to be creative. And that was really great. And I think another part was Minerva's accessibility that was really, that really resonated with me because um, my family had not tried, had not tried to pursue a privileged educational path, but this school kind of tried to make ways to accept anyone, no matter what their financial or social background was. And so, yeah, it was a really exciting time where I got to work on a lot of interesting projects and learn in a really innovative way online. Um, 
a cool thing about Minerva was that there are no lectures, so it's all debates and conversations. And so you're always actively engaging and learning and discussing with your professor and your peers, which was really fun for me coming from a background where for five years I did all my stuff alone kind of for a lot of the time. So it was really great to kind of bounce ideas off of people and have like really intense rapid discussions. I really yeah, that had to be a really big change for you. I can imagine, right? Uh, going from very self-directed approach where you're by yourself most of the time to mm -hmm. a an approach where you have hundred people around you, probably most of them very active and very critical and very, uh, I would say, passionate about what they, they believe and what they want. Um, so how, how was that? How was that adjusting? I, I can imagine that had to take some time. Maybe. I think it was different. I think in my lifetime, I've experienced like the very traditional structure um, where you have things to do every day and you just follow all the rules and take in the information and go home. And then I live through a structure where there's no structure and there's, <laughs> it's whatever you make of it. And Minerva was kind of an in-between where there is structure. Um, there are assignments and there's curriculum that you follow. But beyond that, it's a lot of what you make of it as well. And so I think adjusting was not too hard in terms of the experience. And I think the thing my parents were most concerned about in terms of adjustment was whether the academics would be doable for someone who hasn't studied academics much in the years before, mm -hmm. since most of my experiences were um, non-academic. And mm -hmm. I found that while I did start off with a lower maybe baseline knowledge on academic subjects than my peers, it was not difficult at all to get into the work and to study and to be um, active in discussions with people. Because I think while there was that, I think the benefit that I had from my experience was knowing how to learn things on your own and learn things quickly. Since most of the time when I was learning, I taught myself and in Minerva, it's kind of a flipped classroom. So you teach yourself the material and then go to class. And so in that sense, it was really easy for me. And I was really used to teaching myself things and looking things up on my own um, to figure things out. And so there wasn't a big adjustment on that sense as well thankfully to my parents relief <laughs> oh well that's very very interesting um i was wondering if you had to go back and you had to talk to your teenage self um what would you tell her about the journey that you started um i'm thinking about other teenagers that might watch this video and they are considering something different due to probably the whole COVID situation of doing something like more self-directed. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think I definitely wouldn't say to everyone to just drop out of school and do whatever you want. <laughs> um, but I think what I would say is to think deeply about what you're doing in your life and what you're learning and what you want to be doing, what you're passionate about and makes you excited. Because I think I'm realizing that these times um, in our teenage years and our youth are very precious and they're so influential in forming the way we think and the way we do life going forward. And so I think I would really want to tell both myself back then and in students now to really explore um, things you're interested in and to not limit yourself. Like nobody needs to know now what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. You don't need to have an idea of what job you'll have now. And so this is a great opportunity and time to explore things, especially with coronavirus. I guess a lot of your plans, a lot of people's plans are messed up anyways. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. So this is a really good opportunity, I think, to um, look around and see what you like and try things out um, and think about what what makes you happy now? Yeah. That's a very good advice. Um, so what's next for you? What's kind of like, what would you like to do 
now with your journey, I, I can see that you have been very, very intentional about what's been your journey so far. So um, you have just graduated. Um, where, where are you heading to? Yeah, I think every couple of milestones, I always have this reevaluating like season. Um, like when I was leaving high, when I left school at 14, there was a huge um, debate in my head on what I should be doing, how I should live. And then I was comfortable with the decision I made. And then there was college. And then I had this other struggle, like, okay, now what do I do? And do I pursue or not? How should I live with this? And now after finishing university, I'm at another stage where I'm kind of like, okay, now how should I live? And what should I be doing? Because I could be doing literally anything at this point. And so I think I still have this attitude of wanting to explore things and to continue learning um, and growing and being free to pursue the things I'm interested in and figure out and piece together all the things that I've experienced to create something beneficial to people. And so I guess what that looks like right now is working on different projects. I'll be working with Alvaro, I guess, going forward. Um, and I'm trying to keep myself open, especially in these uncertain times on what might come my way and where I might be and things like that. So I guess, as always, I'm at the stage where I'm looking at the options and just keeping myself open for what happens. Yeah, I really appreciate that attitude of exploration. Um, and you, you're kind of reevaluating the situations in your life, just looking at them and thinking deeply where you want to go. So I think that's why probably, as you can see in your progression, you have, you have ended up being to places that probably are not the mainstream ones, but mm -hmm. they are pretty unique and special. Uh, and I, I really think that many, many, teenagers especially looking at, at this video are considering right now. And I think also this generation mm -hmm. is probably much more intentional than the ones that came before because they are in a much more connected, informed world. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, in your case, your university decision came up in a Facebook ad. Uh, how many people <laughs> in my generation would have said that. Um, <laughs> in my generation, we didn't even, when I was choosing university, I didn't even consider one outside my city. Um, so imagine how much it's changed, uh, the process, the mental process of it. So very, yeah. very exciting and interesting. I can't wait to see what comes next and and what you can do with all those skills and, and talent that you have developed through this year. So congrats, Frances, on your journey. I, I think uh, it's been really exciting and I can wait to see more of it. Thank you. And I guess I'll add that I think it does take a lot of courage for a young person to make these kinds of decisions, whether it's something as extreme as leaving school or pursuing an alternative path. And for me, I guess my parents were a lot of the source of like my security and courage to do these things. But I think, I think this is a, this generation that we have now of young people are very courageous and I think are, would be willing to take these kinds of risks for their education and for their lives. So I think it'll be an exciting time to see what comes out of this. That's uh, wonderful end of this conversation thank you so much francis i wish you the best in your next stage and looking forward to to see you back here soon for more stories to tell thank you bye bye <laughs>